Is <laughs> that my own very personal flying saucer? It is, isn't it? It's out of the way. That would have been a disaster, wouldn't it? Beatrice Lacey, I'm known as B, and I am an artist and a mother, sometimes a musician, and I live in Hastings, and my studio is in Hastings. I didn't have an education at school, I'm completely dyslexic, and um, it was the one thing that I really wanted was an education. If I had had an education, I would have been a doctor. <laughs> but as it went, the only route I could take was going to um, art school and I was lucky to get a place at Goldsmiths in London at the end of the 80s. And it was quite, a, quite an interesting time, um, especially for somebody that was um, uh, fiercely figurative and could only do what I could only do what I could do I could only do what I was driven to do my uh, my spirits or whatever it was made me do um, which was as far away from conceptual art as you can get <laughs> and I didn't get the acclaim for at, at college and it was a very very hard time I grew up with painting because right up until the age of nine because my father was an artist and that was my life when I was with him was in his studio surrounded by materials and art materials and he was a very Victorian man he was an old man when I was born so he was born in 1891 and so we had a very Victorian upbringing. We weren't allowed television, we weren't allowed magazines, comics or books of any kind, apart from the Bible, Dickens. And the rest of the time we would be in his studio, just making art. My first painting was very early. I habitually, only ever painted the bride and it was an abstract form it was a shadow form i remember distinctly at the age of three painting this bride and this little stick man next to it and the stick man was me because i wanted to marry the bride i wasn't interested in being the bride i wanted to marry the bride <laughs> But now I know that every time I pick up a paintbrush, I'm still painting that bride. But this time, the bride's me. This type of art comes about because I struggle with definite form. And as soon as something's definable, I'm, it's my instinct to destroy that and to um, explode it. I want to dissolve it and um, deconstruct, deconstruct it. So just through default my work is both figure and abstract. Because you can't hide the figure, the figure's always there. Even if there's no figure there, I know it's there because it's me. I'm inspired by the possibilities of paint of where, what I can do, where something else takes over and where that can take me. And every time I do something, it's unravelling something which is teaching me about myself. I either listen to very early choral uh, music or Free, complete freeform jazz. The more freeform, the better. I like the K 
chaos and the deconstructed nature of, of freeform jazz and not knowing where it is or where it's going to go next. Anything, that, anything that's predictable like country and western or rock is a noise to me. I, I find it a pollution and, a, and an offence to my senses. I've tried painting landscapes and I'm actually better off knitting a jumper to be honest because it just doesn't take me anywhere but when I paint and draw the figure it's full of meaning and the marks the marks are the language of the, the I'm beginning to learn it's only taken me 60 years <laughs> Being in the studio, working, gives me meaning and a place where I know that I belong. Oh, yeah. I've got a couple of a couple of starting points, and one of them is new to me um, is the camera. Um, photographing, you know, when I take the camera and look through an aperture, I, I find that a very um, that square is something that represents the canvas to me. And I get quite excited about the possibilities of things walking into that space and leaving that space. Or that have been in that space. So sometimes the space is empty. And that's intriguing to me. And so I might I might take a take the initial photograph and then transfer like I would do a drawing onto a canvas and see where that takes me in terms of um, my destruction, stroke creation. <laughs> art is me. I am art. I am the art that I produce. And it sounds really egotistical, that, but I, d I can't see it any other way. It, it holds my pain and it holds my incompleteness and it transforms it into something, something that can still exist as long as I allow it to still exist and I've got power over that because I can destroy it if I want to. What am I working on at the moment? Um, I'm working on making up for lost time and for lost works that I have uh, incinerated. The lost works were drawings and paintings which I just piled up, piled up and set light to, because I felt that they represented something of me that I didn't want to live with anymore. How do I know when a work is finished? I really don't know. It, my work's never finished. If my work's in the studio and, and I've got a paintbrush in my hand, I've always got something to do to it. In fact, I'd probably end up with just a blank canvas by the end of the day. It's, it's in my nature to, uh, like I say, deconstruct and destroy. <laughs> yeah. But I think that underneath the, underneath the uh, layers, the energy of that is still there. I, I believe that, that it all exists like a person. You know, like a person is made of la um, layers of, uh, like an onion, I suppose. If you you can peel the skin and peel it and peel it until you get back to a, a, an essential core of something, and I suppose that's what I'm looking for. Time. I haven't got enough time. I need to come back again and have my life all over again. I feel like. You know, I'm 64 now. 
I've given a lot of time to family and being a mother, being a woman, a house maker, helping with you know with a business that you know that keeps things going. This painting doesn't pay. You have to pay to paint. <laughs> You've got to be realistic in this world. <laughs> this time is of an, of the essence now for me. Uh, I'm hoping I've got another 20 years, and I'm hope I, I've just joined a gym in order to make sure that I'm bloody fit because I need it because I need to get some work done. I want to work this out before I go. My advice is to somebody that's starting out is make sure that you've got an income. <laughs> but be true to yourself and look and see what and 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 draw. It's a lot of skill drawing. It's a lot it, it's it's not even a skill, it's a necessity to look and respond and to and to draw what you see and reinvent what you see on the paper and that's called creativity then I say I think you should know yourself and then I also say if you don't know yourself get to know yourself through painting <laughs> come come up to my studio and I will make you a cup of tea and I promise not to give you earache <laughs> My website is Lacey Fine Art, uh, Beatrice Lacey Facebook, Lacey Fine Art Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Ring me, phone me, track me down. Yeah, <laughs> come and find me. I'll make you a cup of tea or a glass of wine. Even better. But I might use you as a model. Beware. If you come into my studio, the chances are you're going to come out without your clothes on. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs>